Hi, Terry Shaneyfelt for UAB School of Medicine. In this video, I'm going to discuss one of the major threats to the validity of a systematic review, namely publication bias. I'll discuss what publication bias is and give a very general overview of ways that we can try to detect its presence. Before we get started with this video, I really want to make a disclaimer that this is a very general overview of publication bias and not meant for uh, systematic reviewers to get an in-depth discussion of methods used to detect and analyze for publication bias. So publication bias is just one type of reporting bias. And I'd like you to pause this video, review this slide, and see some of the different things that affect the decision to publish or not publish a study that go beyond what uh, editorial boards consider. When you're done, restart the video. So don't you find it interesting that there's lots of different things that go into the decision of, of publishing a paper. Publication bias is just one of them. So what is publication bias? So really it's the tendency to, to submit or accept a study depending on the study's results. And largely what it means is that positive studies tend to get published more than negative studies. And some people call this the file drawer problem where studies that are negative or not as strong as the researchers would like, never get submitted for publication. They're stuck in a file drawer, uh, never to see the light of day. So there's a couple of uh, studies that have shown evidence of publication bias I'd like to show you here. This is one review that looked at the publication rates of significant versus non-significant results, and these are a variety of studies um, that each analyze that. Significant findings are these dark black bars, the white bars are non-significant or studies that had no difference. And as you can see by the black bars, a greater percentage of studies that have significant results get published compared to non-significant results. So that's evidence of publication bias. This was an interesting study published in the British Medical Journal a decade ago, um, which looked at studies submitted to the Swedish equivalent of the FDA for approval of a variety of SSRI drugs. And these red and blue circles are the studies done by the uh, drug companies um, in support of their drug that were submitted to the Swedish FDA. And any publications arising from them are above it in these green diamonds. Now, the red circles are studies that showed significant effects. The blue studies are, um, or the blue circles are studies that showed non-significant effects. And I think what you can see when you look at the rates of publication, there are more publications from red studies which were significant effects than from the blue ones. So this is, again, evidence of significant publication bias. So why does publication bias even matter? Well, remember, the reason we do a systematic review is to understand the totality of the evidence on a given topic. So if publication bias exists and things, uh, studies that aren't positive or suppressed or not published as much, we're not going to be able to see the totality of the evidence. So it leads to a biased estimate of the effect of an intervention or a diagnostic test, whatever we're looking at. And so it often can lead to spurious beneficial treatment effects or spurious um, overestimates of the benefit of a diagnostic test. It can miss important adverse effects also. And what really happens is that negative studies not being published leads to an overestimate of benefit and an underestimate of harm in general for what we're looking at. So this table here shows a variety of methods that we can use to detect publication bias. It's really beyond the um, level of this video to go into any of this, but if you'd like, you can pause the video for a minute, review these uh, because you'll see their names used. Uh, realize that there are limitations to each of these methods. And what I'd like to just focus on is really a more commonly used method, the funnel plot. So what is a funnel plot? Well, it's really a visual tool to look for publication bias. And lots of meta-analyses or systematic reviews will show you the funnel plot that resulted from their literature search. And really it's just a scatter plot of the effect size on the x-axis versus, versus some measure of study size on the y-axis. So this is an example of a funnel plot. So again, down here on the x-axis we have some measure of study effect. In this particular funnel plot they plotted a risk ratio. Could have been a variety of other things. On the y-axis, we have some estimate of sample size, and each of these dots is a study that was found by the researchers. And if the 
funnel is symmetric and what symmetric means is a fairly equal distribution throughout this whole inverted funnel of these dots or studies then there's likely not significant publication bias but what happens when you have an asymmetric funnel it suggests that there's possible publication bias and the area that usually gets lost is down here in the bottom left where we have small studies that are negative so it's much more likely for small negative studies not to get published and this is publication bias and a funnel plot can pick this up visually now there are some statistical tests for funnel plot asymmetry because you can be misled just uh, doing the eyeball test and again it's beyond the um, level of this video to go through these I just included some here for completeness um, and you might see some of these names and maybe it'll make sense to you when you see those names of what they were trying to do so the best thing instead of trying to deal with publication bias is actually to avoid it altogether and what you want the authors of a systematic review to do is look very broad and wide for every study possible and what we want them to do is search what's called the gray literature um, and these are things that tend not to be published so that you want your authors to look for in conference proceedings technical reports websites etc so you want them to do a very broad search to try to find everything possible so what if there is possible evidence of publication bias what should you do well you'd hope the authors reconsider search strategy and did a broader search you'd like them to try to go through possible explanations of why there is publication bias um, and this sort of will then lead to the suggestion of further research to help um, improve the uh, knowledge database for that particular area. So there are often reasons that studies don't get published. You'd like them to, ex again, explore these explanations, maybe doing a sensitivity analysis. You'd like them to acknowledge any potential biases they find and discuss what these implications are in their review. And finally, sometimes if, if biases are so bad, you just have to wait for more studies to be done and either abandon the current systematic review or redo it once more studies are available. I hope this video has helped you understand more about publication bias. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the Contact Me section of my blog. Have a great day.